Welcome in, Reflections. This is a, um, I like to call this, I'm not reading no comments, so I know anytime we get lives like this, where we saying names like a Travis Scott, a Young Doll, individuals who are big celebrities, it's going to bring just saying their name, it's like saying my name. People tag my name and they get all type of extra views they would have never got, right? So, just titling this live, Young Dog Sacrifice, then we know what just happened. Fresh, it's fresh, it's not even six hours old, right? It's going to bring a bunch of people that don't even know Rashad Jamal, they don't even know the university, y'all. You're going to probably have people in the comments saying, oh, he's clout chasing, it, it, it. All y'all can suck my dick because y'all don't even know me. Now, for those who's on my channel, as you can see, for you coming here talking shit, we ain't never have to say Young Dolph name. We already got millions of views on this channel. So run that clout shit. I'm not reading no comments. So if you is coming, you really just going to be a goofy, a smoothie, because I'm not reading no comments. But the real university, y'all know what's up. We got 70,000 subscribers on this platform. Almost five, six million views before we ever said a Young Dolph name. All right, so anybody getting in here talking about, oh, you saying his name for Cloud for Views, you, 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 you don't know who channel you on. Rashad Jamal is a household name I have himself, so I ain't got to say nobody's name for views. I'm, I'm literally making this not this live as a breaking, breaking news live because it wasn't scheduled, right? This wasn't on the schedule. This wasn't what we was talking about, you know what I'm saying? Now, I had to say that real quick. That's my disclaimer real quick right away for Smoothies getting here thinking they know, know me and you don't. You see what I'm saying? Notice that the channel already says 70,000 subscribers, okay? Notice that before you say anything about Cloud in here. You better run that on somebody's page who ain't got a view, who ain't got a subscriber, who doesn't have content. My content is about helping our people and helping our planet. And right now, it's a, you know, they just launched a missile at the community, y'all, because it's in game. And this, this missile they launched, it affects, it affects us, y'all. It affects, it affects me too, you know what I'm saying? Definitely this particular situation, all right? And I'm we're going to say why. Um, but like I say, my disclaimer is this. If you don't like black people, get the fuck out. If you if you white and you don't, if you black and you don't, if you a god and you don't like white people being in here, exit the university. Now we don't support racism. If you got a problem with gay people, we don't support sexism or none of that. We're not against nobody gay. We're not against nobody that's um, not vibrating high. If you vibrate low and you happen to get up in here because Young Dolph, your favorite artist, you might... It might have took this live for you to come into here and learn something about who we really are. And this is the shit I talk about in here. You feel me? Um, if you rich, if you poor, man, we this these doors are open to everybody that's willing to enlighten themselves, man. So that's my disclaimer. I want to say peace to the gods. You know, peace to all the gods and goddesses of the planet. Kai, peace, meaning positive energy always creates elevation. All right? If you've never sat in this university, then you're going to have to just go back to the videos and catch up. But because we're going to get right to it. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to catch you up right now. You're going to have to catch up on your own. But to the University of, of, of Cosmic Intelligence, I welcome y'all back. I know this live wasn't scheduled, so I appreciate all y'all for joining us. This is like a breaking news live. That's how I call these lives when, when something happened. I got to jump on it. You know, I had to jump on it because I wasn't even going to go live about it. But it's just too impactful. You know what I'm saying? Like, um... A lot of people don't know that I have close ties to Yo Gotti and them side, and I got close ties to people that, to Yo, Young Dolphin and them side. You know, Young Dolphin and his people come out of Chicago. You feel me? So I know people on both sides, you know. Um, I don't speak about it because there's nothing to speak about. But if you do a little research, that's that. it's not hard to see that I, I'm connected to both sides. So this is why Young Dolph being killed today in Memphis, which we know death isn't real, so... Uh, it's, it's, it's impactful to his family first and foremost his kids I'm pretty sure I want to send my condolences to his kids to his actual media family and definitely to Memphis you know I love Memphis I always get mad love when I come through Memphis it's a lot of people in, from Memphis that pulled up to our rally you know it's fuck 12 with me in here fuck the police fuck the CIA you know what I'm saying and, and I'm a black revolutionary that's, that's strictly against the system so uh, there was a lot of people from Memphis that pulled up you know to stand with me so I'm sending, I'm sending none, but you know, um, positive energy, right, to Memphis, to 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 Young Dolph and his family, right. Um, I 
I want to send the deepest of insight to the eldest though, 65 and older that's in the university that's in here all the time. And you might not even know who Young Dolph is. It's a lot of people in here that, that's on my platform that don't, that's not going to even know who Young Dolph is because we don't support negative frequencies in here. And a lot of the music that Young Dolph put out will, will be considered low frequencies. However, I understand Young Dolph. So I always, I always love this music. I understand him. I can speak their language. Like I come from the hood. I come from the trenches. So that's why like, you know, Young Dolph, he represents a, a soul that, you know, he lived, he lived the best way he could live. You know what I'm saying? When, when he made his music, a lot of his music was about selling drugs and stuff like that. But I could relate to that. And a lot of people from the trenches, we can relate to that. You know, um, I think that's why a lot of y'all fuck with me because I ain't never shied away from the fact I'm from the streets. And I go back to say the streets, to say the people in the trenches, as well as those who, who, who went to college and never been in the streets. You know, I'm for the planet. You feel me? Um, but regardless of the content that Young Dolph put in his music, man, he was a great soul. You never, you know, Young Dolph ain't really promote too much violence in his music. Most of his music was just about getting money and getting out the trenches. And, and you know, coming from Chicago, coming out the hood, you know what I'm saying? Um, and most of us coming out the hood, coming from, from pop, from poverty, from, we you know, poverty, you know, um, which was created by the system, the elite. So we speak against most of us can relate to that. We can relate to. Uh, even Lil Baby and these artists, right? This is why it was it's easier to get real then to the low frequency because we we come from that. You know, like when you got carbon in your skin, most of us is not born with silver spoons in our mouths. Most of us don't 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 have the, you know, we don't we don't get the blessing to grow up with, you know, our father and our mom and our home. Like young dog, for example, like real shit, like um, you know, his mom and his dad, you know, they was both strong guys. His grandma had to raise him. So how could he not make that type of music? That was his that was his outlet. But once he got out, he was going back to Memphis and giving it back. I know people, you know, Dolph was out here in Atlanta. I know people in Atlanta that, you know, like I said, I ain't with name dropping, so I ain't gonna name drop no names. You know what I'm saying? But the people that I know know what's up, you know what I'm saying? He was a good dude out here in Atlanta as well, you feel me? Um But right now, this is what they do to us, y'all. You know, also I want to I want to send the deepest insight to my peers, those still in their twenties, thirties, and forties and fifties in the university. Um, and the same thing to the blue crystal babies, those twenty one and under. You know, I don't care where you checking in from right now. You know, we got a worldwide platform right here. You know, so for those of y'all that do know Young Dolph, it makes it a lot easier because he's a big he's a big name to us. You know, but at the same time, it's a lot of people in the in this conscious community, if you want to call it that, that might that might not know who he is. So we gonna connect these dots today, you know what I'm saying? Because I see all type of bloggers, and I'm not no motherfucking blogger. Let's get that understood. You have bloggers, they do their thing. They content is strictly based around who got killed and promoting violence. That's the way they make their money. That's the way they collect their views. Whatever they do, that's their life. I refuse to be a part of that. I use this platform. I'm an intellect, and I'm a revolutionary. I'm on straight kill the police energy about our people, and we gonna take our land back. And a big part of a big part of that, yeah, free Larry Hoover. A big part of that, you know what I'm saying, is a shout out to the Vice Lords, the Crips, the Bloods, the Latin Kings, and everybody else in the trenches. You feel me? Like, I ain't with no dissension. You feel me? And right now, they finna use what they did to Young Dolph to try to spread dissension through multiple cities. I really don't think people understand how connected Dolph was to the streets. You know what I'm saying? I do. Because I, I, feel, I feel the heat, you know what I'm saying, my damn self. You know what I'm saying? Because... He had a lot of connections to the streets on both sides. And then you got, with this happening to him, the first thing everybody going to do is they blaming Yo Gotti. They blaming Soldier Boy. You know, they blaming Black Youngster. And there it go. There it go. Because then you'll have people from from from, from, from Dolph's side. You know, Dolph got people all over the, all over the country. Real street niggas. It's going to step about them, right? Now, they going to be trying to slide on Gotti. Gotti got an album coming out in Memphis. You know what I'm saying? Double album coming. You know what I'm saying? They be trying to slide on Gotti and his people to make it hot for him or, or just dropping his name and shit. Now they, they come on there and die Gotti. And Gotti got a family to feed. Gotti got people he take care of too. You know? And then they drop Soldier Boy name in it. You know what I'm saying? And then, you know, Soldier Boy got family and people to take care of. So what happens is the internet will take that shit, right? And they throw Black Youngster name in it, throw Yo Gotti name in it, throw Soldier Boy name in it. And now niggas, gonna, niggas will go slide on them. 
See, the thing about us, we ain't never been no bitches, man. Like, none of us. I don't care what 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 tribe you represent. Because, like, me, me, me and brother Rod Hayes, we were just on Clubhouse the other day talking about how all these gangs, man, you know, they call them gangs now because they was infiltrated by people that look like us. But in the beginning, all the gangs originated out the 50s and the 60s during the civil rights movement, man. Every gang, Crips, Bloods, GDs, BDs, Vice Lords, Latin Kings, all these gangs, man, we wasn't killing each other. Gangs wasn't killing each other. They weren't even gangs. They was organizations designed to protect the fucking community, man. But what did they do? They killed, they killed all the leaders, right, or locked them up. And then pushed drugs into the community in the 80s and turned all the organizations that was designed to protect our communities against each other. So, yeah, when the 90s hit, now, of course, they was gangs. They turned into gangs in the 90s. That's what gangbanging really came about, you know? A lot of the youth, y'all don't know that because y'all in the streets right now. Like, when we was in the streets, 01 to 2010 was my era. 99, really 99 to 2011 was my era in the streets. I got locked up, did six years on a first degree of murder in Chicago. You feel me? And... I ain't even been out six years. You feel me? So I, I know what it what it what it comes to. I know how when we are natural warriors and so they use our chi and our life force to make us kill each other. So you're not listening to, you know, somebody that ain't from the streets. I'm really from the streets. One of Larry Hoover's finest. You feel me? I'll never denounce, you know, what tribe I ran under. For 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 the rest of my days, I'm always represent big G's and D's. Just like I'm an Ananuki God, you feel me? But I don't I don't support I don't support what these what these what these movements have become. You know, I don't support you know, Tukey Williams wasn't for none of this bullshit that the Crips was doing, man. You know, the leader of the bloods didn't represent none of this shit the bloods be doing. Larry Hoover ain't on none of this shit these niggas to say they GDs be doing killing each other. That ain't growth and development. That ain't that ain't the, that ain't the struggle. The odd struggle for educational, economical, political, and social development. That's the struggle. You feel me? The 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 brothers that create the vice lords, they weren't for killing each other. Vice lords really meant to become the lord of your vices, of your weaknesses, the master self, self-mastery. You know, I always speak about the Latin kings, the, you know, the, the, the god that created the kings. He wasn't with killing each other. They Latin kings and Latin queens, they understood it. The power that came with that carbon when they when they was calling themselves Latinos. You know, the Latinos and the black race, we won. We the original gods. It's our land. Before it was gangs, we was we was they called us Navajo and Cherokee and Choctaw and Mississippian tribes and the Illinois Confederacy and we've been tribal. Why do you think? Once again, with Larry Hoover, you know me and me and brother Rod Hayes was just talking about this on Clubhouse. Like, you know, his he has direct roots to the Mississippians, man. One of the most powerful tribes on the land right now. They come off this land. You feel me? He got direct lineage, Larry Hoover. You know, that's why they don't want to free him. That man in, in jail and all type of murders and drug conspiracies got put on him that he ain't had nothing to do with. Feel me? They infiltrated that. They did the same thing with Jeff Ford. Black Peace Stones in Chicago, man. They was running neck and neck with the Black Panthers. Jeff Ford and Fred Hampton was on that with the, with the police in Chicago. You feel me? They tried to put the Black Panthers and the Black Peace Stones against each other. You feel me? I'm giving y'all real, real history. For the smoothies just joining the live, don't know nothing about me, just think I'm something goofy. You run my name through the streets of Chicago and you see what record come back to you, man. I ain't got to be out there no more because what I'm going to stand out there in the streets for and, and continue to participate in trying to hurt, hurt my own people, man. Hurt my own tribe. Now, nah, my war with the police, my war with 12, I'm going to fuck the CIA energy, fuck the FBI. That's who I want, that's who I want to kill. That's real gangster shit. That's real gang gang. Not none of that lame shit these rappers be saying in songs and then niggas killing each other, man. And then niggas posting bond money for each other, right? Because what happens is what you got right now with like the Young Dolph situation. Like, you got the internet finna already take this situation because there's no real divine insight being put to it, right? Our community has been turned against each other because we are the kings and queens of this land. We are the original Asiatic beings. Right? So it's easier for the people in power to keep control of us long as we killing each other. And when one of us die from any sort of violence, you got smoothies that run to the internet, these bloggers, 
and they want to add fuel to the fire, right? You see the footage rolling out of Young Dog killed. You see motherfuckers on the scene. Niggas ain't care. You heard of the niggas' voice. Niggas was happy. Oh, man, they got him, y'all. Come on, man. I know when I'm up. I ain't hear nobody crying out there. I ain't hear no, no pain and nobody soul that was on the scene. I'm not saying it wasn't nobody out there on the scene that didn't feel it. But I'm saying from the videos that's surfacing that we all seeing, man. That was pure happiness for motherfuckers because all they saw was, oh, this nigga thought he made it out. Mm, now he gone. He ain't making nowhere. You know, like they say, the crab in the butt, the crab in the basket effect. And right away, that's going to trickle down to the streets. See, you got to understand, like, for some of y'all, it's the internet. But for the real ones, the real awoken ones, and the ones that's really in the streets, this ain't the internet. You see what I'm saying? Motherfuckers be reading every comment y'all posting. When you bragging about somebody getting killed and saying this person did it, three pages, they lurking, they ain't playing. And motherfuckers sitting back laughing. Y'all be safe in Memphis and this and that. I don't feel like that. You see what I'm saying? Why is everybody getting a, a laughter out of what just took place in Memphis and the fact that it can trickle into more? Then something happened to Yo Gotti, he end up dead. Then motherfuckers would be on the internet or Soldier Boy, or Black Youngster, then motherfuckers gonna get back on the internet and gonna roll out the videos saying, oh, that's fucked up. And, and now motherfuckers crying. And then now it's more motherfuckers under that post if something happened to Gotti, Soldier Boy, Youngster. And now niggas is laughing about that and, and gonna keep it going. And all this shit is doing is distracting us completely from what the fuck we need to be focused on. The real opposition. And I'm going to prove to you, I'm going to talk to you right now about how Young Dolph, this was a blood sacrifice, man. Yo Gotti did not just kill Young Dolph. All right? And by me going and breaking this news now, I hope they don't take my YouTube channel. Because they watching me. You know, the elites, right? They not elite shit. But we call them the elites because these are these rich, white, racist motherfuckers that run everything, that set up the laws. You know, they just killed Young Dolph. And a lot of people don't understand why. But we're going to talk about why they why they killed him. All right? And he was leaving many, plenty clues, like most of them do, when they know that the people on their ass. The biggest stance an artist can take, right, when you're in the industry, is to be independent. Now, because Soldier Boy and, 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 and um, Dolph had a couple words, and Soldier Boy was coming at him and saying he wasn't independent. I mean, yeah, technically, Young Dolph wasn't independent because he was signed to Empire Records. But he didn't have a mostly there we go. I've been around the industry a long time. So I understand how it works. Feel me? I got like brothers and people that's really in this shit in the industry. A lot of people don't even understand how contracts work. So they took Soldier Boy literally. Literally. And I, I fuck with Soldier Boy. I fuck with Flo Malcolm. Flo Malcolm, that's my brother. That's my little brother. He signed to Soldier Boy. Soldier Boy. And anybody know me, know me and Flo Malcolm. That's my little brother. Right? So, listen, right? I'm literally connected to all three parties except for Black Youngster. You feel me? I know people that fuck with Dolph on them side. I got close ties to people that fuck with your Gotti and them. And I got close ties to motherfuckers that's actually fucking with Soldier Boy and signed to him. So, I don't want to see nothing happen to none, none, none of the three of them gods or they families or they, or they kids or they friends, especially when I know that ain't nobody pulled the trigger but the, but, but, the, but the big dog to top. People that follow this platform, y'all see me taking the stands against the system, right? But sometimes you can underlook the other individuals that's taking the stance in their own way. See, we all take a stance in our own different way. Like Prince, for example. When Prince was trying to take his stance, he didn't do what Rashad Jamal did because Prince is an artist. Rashad Jamal is a revolutionary slash intellect that just so happened to, to put his lectures over beats. I'm not a rapper. I'll never proclaim to be that. I'm not a rapper. I'm an intellect slash revolutionary. I'm a gangster. That's what I am. I'm a god. That's what I am. This waking his people up and preparing us to rebel against the system. Feel me? And if I got to leave here to do that, I'm with that too, because then I, I left my energetic imprint 
on the planet. My intention. You see, it wouldn't be a lost cause. It wouldn't be a lost cause because it was for a higher purpose. But Young Dolph, like Prince, they took their stand being independent. Young Dolph had a distribution deal with Empire. He wasn't signed to no record label. So Soulja Boy was right when he said, hey, Young Dolph got more help. Because Soulja Boy ain't got no help. He ain't got no distribution, none of that. So his argument was right. But in that argument, it'll confuse y'all. Not understanding that even though Soldier Boy is right, he has no help. So big kudos to Soldier Boy, what he do, right? But Dolph had a little help because he had a distribution deal, but he still wasn't signed to a major record company. That's two different things, all right? That's distribution, all right? Now, you got to understand, even though he had a distribution deal, the major label's been trying to get young Dolph to sign with them since he came out. And I think a lot of people seem to forget that. I think a lot of people think we just talking when we telling you how this industry work, man. Right? I think a lot of people seem to forget the true reason they killed Prince. Because he owned his masters. Alright? That's why Prince was killed. When Prince was writing on his cheek, slave, and he changed his name to the artist formerly known as, that was all in defiance against the major labels. That's why Prince was killed. That's why Michael Jackson was killed. Because he was going to go on a world tour talking about they don't really care about him. Right? Singing all his classic songs that was always against them. Michael Jackson was always against him. Right? The, the Villa Lago shit was lies. They injected him with a disease. And then they, then they slaughtered his image. They tried to kill Michael Jackson in 1984 when they set his fucking hair on fire at the fucking Pepsi commercial. People forget that. That was an assassination attempt. It didn't work. So what they did, they killed his image. Michael Jackson spent the rest of his life being looked at as somebody that's trying to be white because they hit, they injected him with the disease and that he was this pedophile slash rapist. That's how we looked at Mike all the way till he left this motherfucker. Destroyed his whole legacy. It wasn't until he left that people remember, like, oh, that's Mike and what he did. And then went back and listened to what he was singing about. And what he was trying to say. And why they attacked him like that. Because we wasn't as woke as we are today. Stay with me. If you came in here to hear me um, add fire to the young Dolph, fake Yo Gotti beef and soldier. I, didn't, I don't do that. So you go ahead, you might as well exit now and go to one of them bitch ass bloggers that ain't no real. I'm really from the streets. And I'm going to tell you right away, that ain't the route to go. I really did face life in jail. Had to, I'm here right now because I went to jury trial and they said not guilty. I ain't cop out like 99% of street niggas do. I better fight them, nigga. Niggas just be street niggas, cop out. I fought all the way through. That's why I'm sitting here today. Without a, without a lawyer. Don't let this intellectual shit fool you. I couldn't talk about it if I ain't living. And ain't nobody real that ever really went to jail and faced real cases, real hard time, gonna tell you to stay in the streets and keep killing each other. That's fake shit, nigga. Only these fake bitch-ass rappers that ain't never really fought no heat. Niggas going down for crack cases and gun cases, that ain't no heat. If the judge said guilty, I wouldn't be sitting here right now, nigga. That's a different type of heat. Division 9, Supermax, Cook County Jail, Chicago. Not no gun case, not no cracking, not none of that shit where you looking at an outdate, nigga. I, would, I wouldn't have had an outdate, nigga. For 40, 50 years, the judge said guilty. So I'm going to tell you. Ain't nobody in there trying to be in there, man. Ain't nobody in there that's face, facing real hard time like we call it. Doing the niggas in there reading Bibles, man. Muffin that bitch working out, reading Bibles, reading Korans, prayer circles, man. See, they show you that shit on TV. To make it seem like it's cool and, and niggas in there happy and motherfuckers, we don't want to smell each other's feet all day. Can't even shit. Got to tell my celly, drop one, flush one, because when if he drop, if he shit in that toilet bowl, might hear that shit the water, that's going to fuck with me mentally. And now we going to scrap in this cell. Same thing with me. Drop one, flush one. Sitting in the truck waiting for mail call, hoping you get mail, don't get it. Like, that ain't, that ain't, that ain't where nobody need to be. But the way they promote this negative music and this agenda, that's exactly where they're going to send your goofy ass. Because when the real ops come, which is the police, niggas cuffing up.
But you see me, you like this. Oh, yeah, that's a nigga that's on YouTube. You's a bitch. You see what I'm saying? You's a bitch. Like, all that energy, we ain't on none of that. You feel me? We gonna hoodie up with them. With 12. That's the ops. And see, like, Young Dolph, they been wanting him, man. The whole way they set him up to sacrifice him. This shit started with the honey shots. You got people on your Gotti side sitting in jail right now for those honey shots that went that young dog car and he didn't do it. The whole thing, because see, a lot of people think, don't even understand that Yo Gotti is not, he not signed with them. He got distribution for his own company with them. And he own his own masters. Soldier Boy, who name instead of getting drawn into this shit because he had a few words with, with, with Dolph. Guess what? He on his own masters. So they trying to make it a three for one right now. Pay attention. Pay attention. If they take the YouTube channel, we know why. Because I'm fucking up. They, they chest move right now. Hopping right on it right now. I'm fucking their whole chest move up. But before I watch my people kill each other over what just happened to Yummy Dolph. Which is what they want. I'll lose the YouTube channel. Because I know exactly what's going on. It was a three for one. What do all three of them have in common? They all own their own masters, nigga. So now they they made they kill young Dolph. Motherfucker gonna think it's Yo Gotti and them immediately. Because they were like, Dolph ain't had no beef with nobody but who? Yo Gotti, because they already framed that years ago. 2018, 2017. Got you thinking it's your God and his people. And as we all know, on the outside, you know that, that one of your God people went down for that. Five went down for that. He's done like 10, 12 years right now. And he didn't even do it. But they framed it and set it up so crucial. Somebody's going to have to go down for that. Because that's how the elites work. They control the police. They control the judge. They control all that shit. Nigga, they want you. They're going to jam you up in there like that. And guess what all the fans saw? 100 shots go off when Dolph Carr first got shot up. Right? In Charlotte. It was words being going back and forth between them two. Right? But not one time was Gotti ever planning to kill young Dolph or looking at it like that at all. That's why he was more, and he more, he was a little more mature than Dolph. He was a little older than him. So he ain't never really give that energy to him. Dolph gave his energy like any like any young young nigga gonna do at the moment. Like, hey, I'm coming up too in the city. You know, I'm trying to make my way. You feel me? Because Dolph even admitted Yo Gotti was wanted to sign him at one point. All right, pay attention. Don't forget that. It's no different than Pac and Biggie, y'all. Everybody think Biggie had killed Pac. A biggie people did that. When Tupac first got killed, nigga, they had set the whole East Coast, West Coast beef up and Pac said it himself. A week later, he get killed. He said it on national TV at the, at the wars, nigga. Man, that whole East Coast, West Coast beef ain't no beef. That's the media painting all that shit to try to make y'all think it was beef. Tupac said that out his own mouth. You go look it up. People say to forget that, though. Because they had their they minor disagreement, it made it easy to think that that came from the East Coast. Because that's who the only motherfucker Pac had issue with. They tried to put it on the Crips, Orlando, and come on, no Crips with that shit. The main thing everybody was thinking was it was big in them when it happened. It was puffing them. Suge set them up. Suge ain't set up Pac, man. 
Shook the nigga, belt him out. Shook belt Tupac out for a million dollars. But niggas forget that though. They tried to kill Suge too. Why is that got grazed in the head? And Suge know the truth, which is why they end up locking Suge ass up and they killed Suge Knight in jail. Ain't nobody asking about where Suge at because you think he got 20 years. That's exactly how they do. Because Suge knew what was going on. And he was a gangster, so he was going to eventually say something. We got to get him out the way. They made exactly how they do. Because Suge knew what was going on. And he was a gangster, so he was going to eventually say something. We got to get him out the way. They made Suge life hell. No, it's after Pac died. Suge shit went down, too. All the way up to then they hit him with this fake-ass car accident murder. Because he knew the truth. Snoop know the truth. But guess what? Snoop ass soft. So Snoop just kept it quiet and converted to what the people want to do. That's why Snoop was able to go so long. Him and Dre, nigga. Dr. Dre, $800 million, all that beats by Dre shit. Yeah, because them niggas sellouts. Pac and Suge wasn't no no sellout shit. That's why Pac ass is dead and Suge ass is too. But the main thing I'm trying to point out is that they orchestrated the whole beef. But you forget that Pac and Biggie was like that before the shooting in New York. That was set up. They made Pac believe that Biggie set him up because it was a studio session that Pac was pulling up to. He pulled up the Quad Studios at Biggie session. Peep Gang, they, they doing the same thing right now with Dolphin Gotti now. 